Question number 9. Diagram 5 shows the conversation between Nash and Cikgu Wong. So, what Nash said? Nash said, uh, sorry, Cikgu Wong said, Nash, please collect the shoe sizes of your classmates. And then, alright sir, I know that the data is discrete random variable. It's quite a weird conversation, huh? But anyway, is Nash's statement true? Give your justification. So, shoe size... Um, Okay, here's the thing. This is quite a funny question because by right shoe size, you will have decimal, correct? You have like for example, 6.5 or shoe size 7, 7.5 and, and so on, right? So we have decimal. So by right, it should be, uh, it shouldn't be discrete, lah, okay? It should be continuous. But I think what this question is trying to say is that you won't see a shoe size that is, for example, six like for example uh, six point three two four you know you're not going to see this kind of uh size or seven point two one six you're not going to see this it's either six six point five seven seven point five eight eight point five and so on correct so because of that this question is actually considered true okay this is considered a discrete because it's either a whole number or one decimal place so i i don't know why they do it like this but the answer here is actually true okay you have to make sure that you have to consider that as a discrete random variable okay question b in a shooting competition def fires n shots okay n number of shots p is the chances of his shot hitting the target so this is the probability of success p is the probability of success q is the is the otherwise chance so that means that's the probability of failure the chance of his shot hit the target at most one is 11 times the chance of him not hitting the target show that okay question one they asked to show so this question you have to base your you have to form an equation and that equation has to come from the last sentence here okay so what they're trying to say they're trying to say See, I read that last sentence again. The chance of his shot hit the target at most one. At most one. That means the probability of him hitting the target at most one. That means P X at most one. Okay. The probability of him hitting the target at most one is, so is means equal, 11 times the chances of him not hitting. So the probability of not hitting. Okay, you must form this equation, only then you can solve. Okay, otherwise it will be hard to prove this one here. Okay, so we're going to solve this. Huh? So Px less than 1, so that means you're going to find for Px equals to 0 and also Px equals to 1. Okay, equals to 11 Px equals 0. Now, so you got Px equals 0 here, here you got Px equals 0, so you can put them together. So you have equals to 1 okay so 11 minus 1 okay I brought this the other side huh? so I have this so here becomes 10 so px equals to 1 equals to 10 px equals to 0 okay so let me just go down a bit so let us expand this huh? so this is um, binomial huh? okay so binomial means n you don't know what is n value n p sorry not p n c one and then p value one and then q value n minus one equals to ten times n c zero p power zero q power n minus zero is n lah okay so from here what do you know n n c zero is always equals to one P power 0 is also equals to 1. Okay, understood. So what you have here is NC. Okay, NC1 is equals to this one. NC1 is equals to N. Okay, you can type in your calculator any number, uh, like for example, 10C1 equals to 10. Uh, 11C1 equals to 11. So it's understood this one is equals to N. Then times P. Okay, here's one thing I want you to take note. Right? You see the equation here? There is no P, right? 
the equation here has got no p. The answer they want you to show has got no p. So the one more thing you have to do is you have to remove all the p in this equation. So how do you remove the p? We know that p plus q equals to 1, right? Probability of success plus probability of failure equals to 1. So p is equals to 1 minus q. So you can substitute that into your equation. So 1 minus q. And then here you have, okay, this one you have to understand uh, in indices. So n, uh, qn minus 1 is the same as what? qn divided by q1, right? Because divide means you're going to minus this. So in other words, you can write like this, qn over q. Okay, so this is q power n over q equals to 10. So this one is already 1, this one already become 1. So only thing left is q power n. Okay, okay, let me erase this. Okay, so the question wants you to show what? I write here, n 1 minus q equals 10 q. So this part we already have in front here. Okay, so the only thing we have to remove is this guy. So we can bring the other side. Okay, so you have n bracket 1 minus q equals to 10 q n and then when you bring the other side it becomes q over q n so here you can cut so your answer will be n 1 minus q equals to 10 q so that's what they want right so shown okay so that's how you solve the first question so the main thing is you want to f get this equation from that set last sentence there if you can get that equation you can solve it already okay second one hence so when they say hence that means they want you to use this answer lah. hence or otherwise find the value of p and q if the mean is six okay so mean we know the formula of mean is n p okay so the mean is six so n p okay we want to find okay we can use this equation here how do you find n? You can shift the 1 minus q to the other side. So you get 10q over 1 minus q. Okay, so this is n. Huh? And then you have to multiply by p. What is p? p we know is 1 minus q. So you can write here 1 minus q equals to 6. So this one you can cut. So 10q equals to 6. So q is equals to 6 over 10. Or you can write simplify it to 3 over 5 you can either write like this or you can write in uh, decimal lah. so 0 0.6 so if q is 3 over 5 we can know p p is what 1 minus q which is 3 over 5 so you get 2 over 5 okay you can write like this or you can use decimal 